One of the, uh, uh, the map shows here a raid that was the first great American, well, I don't want to call it victory, but it sure was a shot in the arm for the Americans. On April 18, 1942, 16 B-25 land-based bombers took off from an aircraft carrier, the USS Hornet, deep within the Japanese uh, sphere of influence. And by the way, that red dotted line uh, kind of moving around the middle of the Pacific, uh, north of Australia through Southeast Asia, that's pretty much the extent of the Japanese empire. Take a look at where the aircraft carrier is, is deep within that zone. This is a gutsy maneuver in 1942 when we've got no real fleet to help these guys out. A very, very small task force. But the airplanes are launched, four bombs per airplane, 16 bombers. You're not going to do a lot of death and destruction this way. But the shot in the arm of Americans have attacked the capital of the Japanese empire was a phenomenal boost in itself. This is a picture of one of the bombers leaving the USS Hornet. Uh, taking these airplanes off uh, of an aircraft carrier was not exactly a standard mission for them, but all 16 airplanes got off. All uh, but one of the airplanes that landed in uh, the Soviet Union at Vladivostok ended up crashing in China. A lot of reasons for that we don't have to go into. So we lost every single airplane on the mission, uh, several crews captured, several of the people executed by the Japanese, most were repatriated to the U.S. But two things happened. One, the morale. Uh, impact of, wow, we finally struck back, and two, strategically the Japanese for the remainder of the war said, wait a minute, they're not supposed to be able to attack us, maybe we better keep fighter forces in Japan, not in New Guinea, not out in the forward battle areas to protect the home islands, and that became very, very important later in the war. The first major victory, and it was a tactical defeat, in other words, yeah, the, the, the battle force, we actually lost heavier, but a strategic victory for the United States, in this case, was the Battle of the Coral Sea, which is the first naval battle in history where the combatants never saw each other from the ships. This was air Air power from the American carriers flying to the Japanese carriers out of sight of each other. It turned out the Japanese lost one small aircraft carrier. We lost a large aircraft carrier, the USS Lexington, which was one of our uh, earliest and oldest aircraft carriers, but, a, but a, a, a major symbol of American naval might. She, she was sunk at the Battle of Coral Sea, but what that did was stop the Japanese from invading the southern part of New Guinea and securing that island totally, which would maintain control over all the northern approaches to Australia and could have put that large continent island nation into jeopardy. So a major strategic victory for the United States, but this was probably the turning point of the war. Admiral Yamamoto, the architect of the entire Pacific campaign for the Japanese, had said at the onset, hey, I can basically, I think, with the attack on Pearl Harbor and the Philippines and the rest of our plan, probably run amok in the Pacific for about six months. Well, that's about how long it lasted until we achieved the victory at Midway. The 3rd through the 6th of June, 1942, largely thanks to the American code breakers who had broken the Japanese naval codes, we detected the plan that the Japanese were going to attack Midway. Midway is actually part of the Hawaiian Island chain. Uh, it's, it's quite a bit to the northwest of the, of the islands that we think of today as Hawaii, but Midway was an important place that we had advanced forces who could scout the approaches to the, to the Hawaiian Islands and whatnot, and if Midway could be taken, wow, that is a major, major victory for Japan in extending its sea frontier. Uh, we put basically the naval forces that we had cobbled together into two task forces uh, around three aircraft carriers, and that's all we had in the Pacific. Uh, up toward Midway, the Japanese don't know they're coming, but the purpose of the Japanese 
throughout the war is to entice the Americans to bring the fleet out for one great big battle reminiscent of the 1905 victory over the Russians at the Shishima Straits. And if we can defeat them, they are powerless in the Pacific and that is our bathtub now. We own basically the whole Pacific Basin. Uh, that was the idea. They had a feint up at the Aleutian Islands, the two circles up at the top. They actually took, that's the only American territory um, uh, on North American continent, they actually took Attu and Kiska Island. Uh, turned out to be not much. We didn't buy into their feint and divert forces there. They were all lurking around Midway. Well, the resultant victory is achieved because largely luck, uh, being in the right place at the right time, uh, and the tenacity of some American airmen who paid for a lot of this with their lives. Uh, but there is a painting of one of the most famous incidents in military, particularly naval history, where SBD Dauntless dive bombers have within a five minute period taken out three of the four Japanese aircraft carriers, and these are three of the six carriers that attacked at Pearl Harbor six months earlier. Um, three, and then the fourth one was sunk the next day, hear, hear you. So this is a victory, not only did they not capture Midway, the fleet turned around, it turned around without four of its aircraft carriers, but more important for the Pacific story, it turned around with hundreds of dead or missing Japanese experienced naval aircraft flyers. And that was a loss the Japanese never, never overcame because they had nowhere near the training program the United States had and was setting up at the time. Moving down through the New Guinea area, we had several theaters of operation. MacArthur was in charge of the Southwest Pacific. Nimitz had the Central Pacific. Lord Mountbatten for the British had the India, Indian Ocean, Southeast Asia theater of operations. MacArthur mounts a, an attack stemming the Japanese flow, just because they'd lost Coral Sea doesn't mean they gave up. They were still trying to take Port Moresby on the southern uh, part of New Guinea. They were coming over a tremendously difficult to traverse mountain range. Australian troops largely, supported by Americans, stopped them, pushed them back, and then we mounted a campaign that lasted all the way through 1944 that took those that entire island group, and it did it primarily by leapfrogging, isolating the same campaign that people have heard about in the Central Pacific of just letting Japanese garrisons wither on the vine, passing on to places that we needed. So that was the start of the return from MacArthur's standpoint to the Philippines the sacred area that he had vowed to return to. It was done primarily on the backs of the 5th Air Force that used tactical air power in this manner. Japanese airfields neutralized, you can see parafrag bombs. Those are bombs coming down on parachutes taking out Japanese airfields. Low level attacks by airplanes never designed to do this kind of work but you see Japanese shipping being taken out all along the coast of New Guinea. This went on for day after day, month after month, year after year. Tremendous amounts of supplies sunk, reinforcements killed, not allowed to land, and that's the way New Guinea was taken village by village almost. Um, a tremendous victory. By the way, in that picture on the right, that B-25 went into the water about 10 seconds later, shot down after making a successful attack. Guadalcanal, the Japanese are trying to cut off all American supply routes uh, or Western supply routes into Australia. The Solomon Islands can help do that. So they had taken most of the uh, uh, islands there in the Solomons, including Guadalcanal, the southernmost, 
This was our first offensive operation in the island campaign, and that was to land Marines in August of 1942 on Guadalcanal. That was the first bloodying of the United States Marine Corps, really, on an offensive operation. And the Marines learned a lot from this, how the Japanese fought, what you could do, what you couldn't do well. Um, and those lessons passed on to other Marine divisions that were to move on elsewhere in the Pacific. But the Guadalcanal campaign took months. The naval uh, campaign that went with it, like the land campaign for the first many months, was basically a draw. They'd achieve a victory, we'd achieve a victory, they'd take back. We, uh, the, the area uh, in the central Solomons is known as Iron Bottom Sound from the huge number of ships, both Japanese and allied, they're at the bottom because of fierce losses on both sides as the campaign seesawed back and forth. This is a picture of the introduction, if you will, to the bonsai charge, a tactic used by the Japanese in almost every campaign where after, in many cases, uh, several doses of sake, a nighttime attack would be made by screaming, uh, 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 almost fierce, unstoppable, it would seem, charge of troops coming out of you at the night. And in the morning, the result of every single bonsai charge on every single island ended up looking like this with a lot of dead Japanese. Yes, they may have gotten into the perimeter, but we never, ever lost a campaign because of a bonsai charge. In my view, an interesting military tactic, but a tremendous waste of fine, fine fighting troops. Admiral Yamamoto, get back to this man who was a brilliant naval commander. Interesting background is that he had been uh, uh, Harvard educated, was an attache here in the United States. We recognize that, boy, if we could get rid of this guy, there goes really the heart and soul of the Japanese Navy and one of the greatest brains. On 18th of April, having broken the naval codes again, we find that Admiral Yamamoto is about to make an inspection tour to Bougainville, the northernmost island in the Solomons, and risking the fact that we knew the codes, 400 miles from Guadalcanal, fighters flew P-38s from Guadalcanal below radar and visual range outside the rest of the Japanese held islands to Bougainville and intercepted Admiral Yamamoto's two Japanese Betty bombers, killed him, all of his staff, with the exception of one rear admiral who survived the, the subsequent crashes. For that, we lost one of 16 attacking airplanes. A brilliant, brilliant victory, and thank goodness the Japanese never figured out, well, I wonder why they were here. They don't normally fly this far up. We risked losing that knowledge to the Japanese that we'd broken their codes. They never caught on. And that was 1943. That, that's 1943. If I said 42, it was no, a no. mistake. Uh, in fact, it is exactly one year to the day after the Doolittle Raid right. on, on uh, Tokyo and the surrounding areas.